As resellers, we constantly have to deal with change from eBay. And I think that's one of the things that's gonna get us through the tough times, if you're dealing with tough times, is change. So let's talk about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And yeah, this might be common sense to a lot of you. And for those of you guys who are killing it, I mean, I would not have listened to a thing I say in this video because it doesn't help to make changes for the sake of making changes. But for the rest of us, where we're trying to figure things out, and even if you're killing it, I mean, you're watching these videos for a reason, right? You're trying to get nuggets of information, maybe something you can take from the information to make your store or your selling experience a little bit more efficient or maybe make more sales even though you're already doing well and and even if you're not doing well um, there's a lot of room for improvement and that comes with change so change is how you make the improvements if you continually do the things or live up to the term of insanity and continue to do the things over and over and over again that used to work five ten years ago that aren't working now um, well now look there's a lot of you that will say it's the economy right but if you're continually doing the things that worked for you that aren't working anymore and you refuse to make changes well that could be the first problem and you have to be willing to take a risk sometimes and what may seem somewhat risky um, changing things like changing what you source, changing how you source. These are all things I've been struggling with and things I'm continually dealing with on a daily basis um, because I got into my comfort zone because 2019 was just a great year with liquidation. My sourcing was just on, on point. I mean, I was dealing with a lot of good stuff and then 2020 was still pretty good, but not as good, but it was still good. 2021, starting to worry me, right? And things started to go down a little bit. And then 2022 was sort of the confirmation, right? And it didn't take, it took me a while. It took me until what, um, July, August, before I finally figured out, thanks to a lot of you, that I need to get, um, my eggs in a different basket or, or take my uh, sourcing level to another level and incorporate thrift stores and even yard sales. Well, I tried the thrift store thing and of course my limited knowledge has always been bound to liquidation pallets like electronic pallets, okay? That's all I've known for the last, uh, what, three years of sourcing or my first three years full time of sourcing. and. I didn't have the same experience or the same comfort level, right? It's getting out of that comfort zone. And so went with some folks, um, Carrie from American Arbitrage, right? Lady Arbitrage, Biscuit Butt, went to the first series of yard sales. And I gotta tell you, I had a blast. I mean, it was fun to begin with, but we're not doing this business to have fun. We're doing it to make money. But it, I found product like golf clubs and and other things other than electronics. And I learned from watching others that there, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. There are other things that can make you money in the online reselling business, okay? So I'm still learning, but I've taken that risk. I've taken that initiative to change my sourcing. Now, does that mean I'm not gonna buy liquidation anymore? No, it doesn't mean that but it also doesn't mean I'm gonna hang my hat on liquidation. I'm gonna to continue to look at liquidation lots once in a while, but uh, you better believe that on my weekly schedule will be yard sales and maybe a, a thrift store uh, every now and then as well. But even last weekend, because I'm always looking for new things, right? I'm always looking to learn new things as well. So even last weekend, when I went to a yard sale and I picked out some clothing and it was a dollar a piece. You guys saw the last video that I made over the weekend. And th in that video, you know, I had a lot of concert shirts. I had a lot of stuff that looked kind of cool, but I had no idea what I was buying. But in my mind, uh, the sourcing was low enough. See, that's the key. You want to source. No matter how you source, you want to source at a low rate. And I sourced it at such a low price, a dollar per garment. Um, I've already made my money like three times over on just three shirts, thanks to a viewer. 
uh, out there that uh, thought these were really cool and made me an offer. But uh, just put many of them up. I've been sitting on clothing that I just have had either through liquidation pallets or even a previous yard sale purchase where I bought other things for a dollar that I thought were pretty cool. And I've been sitting on those, right? Because my comfort level isn't there. So I tend to gravitate towards my comfort level. And I think a lot of you as well may gravitate towards your comfort level. And if you find that what has been working in the past is just not there, well, I guess you can keep doing what you're doing. Find that you're gonna keep getting the same results and you're gonna keep doing what you're doing. And it's just gonna be a cycle that uh, repeats itself over and over again you got to be willing in this business to step out of your comfort zone, learn new things. And if you're not learning new things, I don't care how many years you have on this platform, there's many things that you can learn. I've been doing this on a part-time level since, what, 2002. Um, and I was doing that, going to you know, flea markets, computer flea markets, buying computer accessories and things like that, hard drives, uh, PDA keyboards, things like that. And flipping them on the weekend, you know, listing them on eBay. I've been doing that for years. I've sold pool tables. I've sold diamonds. I've sold all kinds of things. But when I was, it, when I was initially given those things to sell, like someone approached me with the pool tables at uh, this bowling alley, wanted me to sell them for them. Uh, diamonds, a friend of mine was selling diamonds. It was very uncomfortable. I, I mean, I really didn't feel comfortable taking on those things but you know I went in and uh, it just takes that first step you got to be willing to make a change and give it an honest shot to work and it's like I'm doing with these clothing I would never I don't like clothing I had a lot of good clothing that my wife and my daughter decided to go in halves on a pallet like two years ago for Macy's liquidations and many of you guys would be like wow new with tags you know right off the uh, right off the rack to me I didn't even care about it. I let them deal with it. And for many of you who sell clothing would have jumped all over it because it was out of my comfort zone. And now I think I would take a different, I would take a different attitude towards it because I have some experience selling clothing and I just feel more comfortable and the methods of taking photos and I'm learning. I don't know a lot about clothing even still, but I'm learning. I know more than I did say a year ago, two years ago as a result. So change is, change is somewhat uh, hard to accept for many of us. Some people don't want to change. Some people don't know how to change. That's why you watch these videos. Um, but you know, it, with changing also comes a change in mindset. Now, I just wanted to throw a quick tip here. It has nothing to do with sourcing. I mean, change doesn't always have to do with sourcing. It could be just how you look at certain things like shipping. So with me, I sell, you guys know I sell a lot of different things. But I got a tip for you guys, at least bring someone some value on how I think and uh, how I make certain things work so I can make an additional three, four, five bucks on shipping or at least save three, four, five bucks on shipping. So let's check it out. I wanted to share a shipping tip with you guys. Now, you know me, I ship all kinds of stuff, different size packages. And what I like to do, we like to put at least a layer, maybe two layers of bubble wrap over the package. Now that's nothing revolutionary because it saves us money on buying and storing boxes for double boxing. So this is actually, these shackles are in the box already and we're just simply wrapping them with bubble wrap. But that's not really the tip. The tip that I want to tell you is I could just throw a poly bag on this like we initially did and eBay is going to charge me $14.74. It's five pounds, right? But on pirate ship, it's $13.40 cubic. You might say that's pretty good, right? They paid, I think they paid like 14, it was calculated. But I always think on this level when I'm shipping, and this is the tip, always think on this level. Can this fit into a priority mail flat rate padded, padded envelope for $8.30? Now you're gonna save yourself um, a good five bucks, right? So, actually six bucks. So, now, that's the thought that comes through my mind every time. So now, that's tip one, but as you can see, this is gonna be difficult. Really difficult. 
so it's a tight fit. Now, if you can sit here and fight with it for 20 minutes, I guess you can make it work. You just got to really jimmy it, but no one wants to spend that kind of time. So, when it's close like that, and I put it in the, pa in the envelope, and it doesn't want to go, I take, it's a 15 by 10 and a half clear poly bag, okay? Use these for clothing and stuff, but I'll simply take the item, put it in the poly bag. Now you might be thinking I'm adding more to the package, but see that? Take it and oops, it just slides right in, hardly any effort. It even goes in on its own when you shake it. And look at that. It fits. I don't have to add any tape or anything because you can fill this envelope with anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be clothing. And guess what? Not only does it have the protection of the uh, bubble wrap that I put on it, but it has the protection of the bubble wrap built in this. And this saved me, what, five to six bucks. And added up over the time, over time, that saves a lot of money. So just a tip for you, get these clear 15 by 10 and a half poly bags and it'll allow you to do what I just did. So what do you think of that tip? Hopefully it helps some of you guys out there. It, you know, there's many times in the past I've tried to make a big item fit into these, uh, these padded mailers and they just don't work. And just simply slipping on a, you know, clear poly mailer, 15 by 10 and a half, and boom, thing just slides right in. And so, uh, wanna know what you guys think down below. So if you like the video, enjoy the content, please hit that like button, it surely helps the video. Hit the subscribe button if you watch my videos, I would certainly appreciate that. And if you wanna be involved in the lives when they come every Mondays and Friday, we're gonna have one this Friday, hit that notification bell so that you can be notified and uh, get there in time to be part of it. For some of us, change just isn't easy. We remember what worked well and maybe we're expecting that same approach to whatever we're doing in our business to continue to work well, but for whatever reason, maybe factors outside of our control, economy, um, supply, maybe is affecting that and you have to be proactive and find those trends and find ways to supplement whatever you're selling or whatever you're doing until those circumstances change. And that sometimes is very hard for a lot of us. But making those changes is just yet another example of how sometimes flipping ain't easy. Real quick guys, one last thing. Join me today which is like in an hour or so after I launch this video, so maybe it's already happened. But join me if you can on the Bearded Picker Channel's live stream at 5 p.m. Pacific, and that's uh, 7 Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. That's today, Thursday. Uh, and if you're like not able to do it, well, watch it after the fact, but uh, do it after this video. But just wanted to let you know, in the next uh, hour or so at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I'm gonna be on the uh, Bearded Picker Channel on his live, so come check us out.